Hey, Scott Fraser here with the T-Shirt Report and my good friend Richard Reeves, and this is show number 18, and uh, we're going to focus a little bit in this show about uh, humidity levels and screen room stuff, but first, let's talk about your shirt. What are you wearing there today? Oh, today, yeah, what's, what's... I'm wearing the shirt that didn't make it into one of the earlier shows. I was wearing it before. This is my Anthony Bourdain shirt, close to the bone. I think my wife would leave me for him. You know, I mean, I love the guy. I love watching his shows overseas because you learn a lot about not just the food, but the cultures. I mean, he is he is great. Then he always smokes a little weed here and there when he gets a chance or talks about his drug days or whatever. So the hair. Is that what that the is? Hair. Ah, that's it. So, uh, but you printed that shirt. Oh, you helped print it down at Pierre's. You were I involved. supervised yeah. the instruction of this shirt. I, I was watching from the air-conditioned uh, offices. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's screams. up. No, people in the <laughs> shop are sweating and it's humid out. So anyway, but you had commented earlier that uh, you had to match a poster or maybe not match a poster, and I deal with that all this the time is, on steps and stuff. It's hard. It's the difficulty that that so many people that the I don't know if they're going to sell posters or they got to get posters made way before, but you got to match something that the art really wasn't designed to to print, and the the poster is this wild gobbledygook of all kinds of things. Uh, uh, look at it, you sort of wonder, if this guy had a little too much mescaline uh, mm -hmm. in his food cooking uh, before, so maybe that goes along with Mr. Bourdain. But uh, then to cut out just this part. Yeah, that's the same image as on the poster. I mean, the poster had all the stuff well, going on, but that, that image was there. You cut out the background, but imagine yeah. that you've got a poster that's this big, and this picture of Bourdain in the middle is just a little tiny a tiny amount. It's all this other stuff in the poster, so they've cut that out. Now, his his position looks like um, uh, what is it? A, a cook's tour. His original show, where he posed for a lot of black and white pictures, where he's going like this. Oh, that's the uh, the neck being up. Turning under. his head. I I'm not doing a. Right. I'm not doing him justice, but uh, I see a little of that in yeah. that yeah. in that position because he's right. got this. Long neck, you know. So it's a caricature. That's six colors or eight colors or what? What is it? Oh, it's a full. It's a full eight. It's you oh, know, it's it? a big job to do, and there are a lot of subtleties. There's blood on his hand and blood mm -hmm. splattered all, all over in the poster, but you really don't understand that that's what he's got sprayed around. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, somebody somebody designed the art, but didn't really design it to be separated to print only six colors. Index separations, which of course you and I are familiar with. It's you know, it's designed to be printed on a poster, yeah. full color process, not index separation. So, you know, that's yeah, that's, that's why we get paid the big bucks. I get stuff like that where the artwork is crappy, but I know they probably, and I, I should boost it up, but then I wonder, well, then somebody bitch that it's too bright. I, I think I commented to you on a side that I did a job a few weeks ago for a car design that, that was dull, and I popped the colors. Talked, that was what I did. The guy comes back, no, 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 the artist hates it. It needs to be dull, you know. I, I thought I was doing him a favor. I thought it was a flat, j flat, crappy JPEG. It was a crappy JPEG that was intentionally flat, but usually I get flat art that you go, my God, they want that purple to pop, so I'll pop it. And they always say, oh, great, nice job, Scott. And this guy goes, no, no, no. So it's it's, it's a tough you know road to follow. And then if you have an artist as a customer, that's your worst nightmare, as you know. You know, Are the customers yeah. in between the artists? I do. I have one guy I've done four different jobs for him. I'll talk about it later on where I finally told the guy I couldn't do any more work for him. But anyway, that's a different story. But it, it's hard. You talked so, about the, the cheeseburger in paradise thing. That, that was your. That's going to be on your headstone, by the way. I think that's what yeah. you, you're known for for guys like me. Well, the Jimmy Buffett cheeseburger in paradise. The design. Um, they brought me beautiful art, and I spent, you know, only a couple of hours getting it set up from scratch, and tweaking it a little bit. Again, this is the day of wooden frames and uh, that did, sort of did, thing. Did Campo separate it or was this, this is pre -Campos? No, no, this is Fred Clark. Oh, Fred Clark. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is pre-Campos. Campos was a mere He was in born. <laughs> yeah, right. Fred Clark, baby. Yeah. So, you know, we got it back and Fred's separations were always always good. We tweaked it a little bit to get it, you know, we, we, I don't think we even made any extra screens. We had it all perfect and I the Cheeseburger in Paradise original art and right next to it, the print. And they looked exactly the same so to me it's the huge win we are kings and i can do this one all day long because it's the way fred clark made the steps yeah michael latona comes in and says "Ooh, gee uh that's funny gee, can, can you can you punch up the colors yeah. can you punch the colors up a little bit more and we then spent probably four hours 
tweaking, changing the ink colors and stuff, stuff that we had to then reproduce for thousands and thousands yeah. of other prints. Yeah, what did we do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's the danger of doing it on the press instead of doing it where it should be done, like full color process, where you, you just put inks in every time, and you print it the same way every time, and it prints the same every time. Yeah. So if we tweak this too much or didn't like it, we then have to do it for all the other shows because they're going to have shows left over from Houston that they have to use in Dallas, and if they look different, that's a disaster. Yeah, that makes it really hard. Yeah. I see something peeking up on your plain white shirt. Let's see if you can see it. Morgan Freeman. <laughs> for 2016. All right. Ah, that's it. Hey, if Donald Trump can run, so can Morgan. Now, people are going to think this is true. This is actually a, a little bootleg. My wife loves Morgan Freeman, and she one day said, boy, I'd wear a Morgan Freeman for President T-shirt. And I go, hey, I got a DTG machine out in the garage. I can do that. <laughs> Print it up a couple. And my grandkids love Morgan Freeman. It's pretty funny. They they both know who he is. They've seen him play God and play the president. So anyway, so I did this. Who did you get to do the art? I went online. I went to Google Image, and I found the best Morgan Freeman and his very thoughtful, you know, and I, yeah. cut, I cut around it. Little flag background that I had, some type, and... Uh, Oh, you mean it's a Scott Fresner original? Oh, yeah, yeah it's, it's a one of a kind or two of a kind. I think I printed half a dozen or something. So anyway, I was looking for a shirt to wear for today's show, and I thought, hey, I need to wear Morgan Freeman. Now that Donald Trump and all those wackos are crazy. Remember to vote. All, all the crazies And are. vote often. <laughs> yeah, well, we're going to see the uh, what the uh, the uh, Republican debates are next week or whatever. That should be interesting. We'll have to, we'll have to talk about that. They're probably selling shirts for it, you know, so. Yeah. Probably a lot of guys doing doing presidential shirts, though. I mean, I'm thinking I, I did some of that when I was an active printer. You probably did some some political stuff. Of course, political you know, signs. Of course, you know the yeah. rule. The rules were get paid in advance. Oh yeah. <laughs> get the money now, baby, because <laughs> because uh, if they lose, that's the last thing they're gonna think about is paying a t-shirt guy. Paying so. the t-shirt guy, yeah. Hey, back into the water cooler talk. Uh, SGIA has given us approval to uh, live broadcast our t-shirt report from the show floor. Uh, from the Garment Zone at SGIA, uh, which is in uh, Atlanta, November 5th to the uh, 4th through the 6th. And of course, you're doing the uh, seminar on the 5th, uh, How I Learned How to Screen Print, or How I Learned to Screen Print, right? With uh, yeah, Kudre, Kudre, Rick Roth, uh, 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 Jacob, and uh, Andy McDougall. Four guys. I don't know, 90 minutes. No, no, an hour. It's an hour and a half. An hour and a half. Okay, all right, all right. So we got to break it down into like 15-minute segments. I'm hoping to get all the guys 15 minutes, and then there'll be other fill-ins. So there'll be the room monitor in the back going. Uh, exactly. <laughs> I've had that happen to me. You probably have too. I've run over on seminars for me. Oh, you, know, you, you, know, you must be you must be crazy. Yeah, but you know, if there's nobody following you, it's okay. If there's somebody following you, then it's kind of rude to. To, to be still talking while they're trying to set up their projector or their or their, their, uh, their computer and stuff. So anyway, uh, so that's what we're going to be. I, you were at the uh, Sandlot. Last show, we talked about Sandlot Sports. Right. After the yeah. show, you would call me and say, hey, they put me on their blog. <laughs> so so there, there you are on their homepage. Uh, I got a great testimonial. Uh, they wrote about me in the blog. I had no uh, idea they were going to do it. It just took me aback. I was very thankful for the kind words they were very kind uh, to me so sandlot sports testimonial in their blog it's, think, a, it's great advertising for my skills as a visitor i think for a lot of guys that they see guys like us out and they you know they think we're celebrities so then you show up and and uh it's kind of a brag you know and it's good for them from a marketing point of view probably because you're on their blog this industry expert came to their shop and it makes mm -hmm. their customers look like you know to them look like that they're the experts now and they they bring in outside guys. So but it was a great picture. I thought it was all these guys, you know, how, they, how you, we've all taken those shots. Hey, let's take a picture. And everybody's looking all pumped up. So anyway. Well, back in the olden days when seminars were king, I'd do a seminar. And, of course, we'd have 75 to 100. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And people were coming up to the podium with their business cards. It was the greatest marketing scheme that I had when the consulting was a, was a big deal. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you know, I'm just as available, especially to talk on the phone. Uh, I did get a call yesterday from a guy that he said, say, 
are you going to be driving right past me on your way down to Atlanta? So uh, I just wondered if you might want to stop in. Uh, Man, I'll buy you lunch. Yeah, I pump you for information. So uh, I'll do I'll do almost anything if you either pay or <laughs> yeah. book me up for the night or um, in this this instance uh, that I did at uh, uh, at Sandlot Sports is it in, you know as long as there's eating involved, I'm happy to talk for a long time. But I did a lot more than that, so. I'm yeah. just teasing them. Yeah. You know, when I used to consult on YouTube, I'm sure, you, you know, you knew that they were going to they take you to dinner. They want to go out and wine and dine you. But the whole time they're pumping you, you know, yeah. just one more question. How do you do this? How do you do that? So uh, anyway, hey, uh, you had commented earlier when we were talking before the show about you read that the L.A. Uh, mayor had uh, announced the uh, minimum wage increase. And even since since we since we discussed that, you've got other breaking news. So, well, he he, he, I, he signed it yesterday, uh, um, the mayor, Eric Garcetti. Uh, he signed a minimum wage, raising it up over five years to eventually in 2020 to get to $15 an hour. Now, this is just a tease. I'm not ready to talk about this now, but I know a lot of people are freaking out, but it's designed to work with companies that have greater than 25 employees. So that really takes a lot of pressure off of screen printers in general. But I asked you... And I should have called some guys this morning, but I just I heard about it just in passing. So next week, I'm just teasing this. Next week, uh, I think we'll have more to say about you know what are the wage concerns. But I think that what uh, Mayor Garcetti has gotten, they've been they've been debating this for three years in the Common Council. It's been a, a duked out thing, three to two on some of the voting mm. in, in uh, 2014. But he signed it today. But but um. I, I don't I haven't been in a shop where I actually knew how much people were getting paid for such a long time. The last time I ran a shop was in uh, in California, and I really didn't have any control over the wages. Uh, the owners did that, mm -hmm. so I'm I'm just teasing this. In the next couple of weeks, yeah, we'll, be, we'll report curious, a little bit more about. It. I'd be curious too whether they're making eight or nine bucks or whatever they are. So that that'd be, that'd be a good topic. We'll do, we'll do next week. So something to freak people out though is the people that have been calling me. Should I up? Grade Windows 10, and I go no, no, no. Wednesday, as we're recording this, Wednesday tomorrow's the day that the full final, what they're not calling an RTM because they don't want it called an RTM because they're not actually manufacturing it. You get Windows 10 not on a disc, you get it through, especially the free version that everybody gets. Wait, 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 wait until all those early adapters with the arrows in their backs. Wait months until they brought out the first patch before you even think about doing it. I have a machine right here that's ready, but it's an older machine. It's a vintage, you know, it's got Windows 7 on it, but it's a $129 machine that I, I've been using for for just to uh, to run SpinWrite on to check hard drives and stuff like that. It's a, it's a potato. But I'm going to put Windows 10 on this tomorrow. I couldn't get it to go on my tablet. My tablet doesn't show that I can actually upgrade. I have a Windows uh, Toshiba Encore tablet, but it doesn't show that I can put it on. But... The tablet, I want to experiment with that, and I will undoubtedly wait, and in a couple of months, I will buy a new laptop with 10 on it, because I need to know what's going on. Yeah. I don't want arrows in my back, but what I about you, too. Scott? Are I, you going no. to be putting 10 on? I, I will, but I hadn't. I, I have to find a, a box to put it on. I, I have a bunch of dead computers. Like, you know, we probably all have the laptop stack of, oh, the power supply died on that, or this button died, or whatever, so I've got a bunch of blue screen laptops floating around. I'll have to see if I can resurrect one here and, and stick it on it tomorrow. We'll talk well, about that next excited. show. People are excited because it's a free upgrade, like Apple, what Apple's been sort of doing. It's free for one year if you've got Windows 7 and Windows 8, 8.1, mm -hmm. any of those variants. So it, it's an upgrade, but uh, I, I, everybody should wait unless you really know what you're I'm doing. Afraid, I'm afraid. And then there's going to be T-SEP. You have no just, choice because you've got to do the T-SEP stuff. Whether well, it's I know what will happen on Thursday. There'll be that email. Hey, will T-SEPs work with Windows 10? You know, or with, with you know, so anyway. So far, we what we've heard and what we've, what we've, what we've scoped out is we should be okay, but... Never... I'll try T-SEPs on this machine I got right, right here. All right, all right, you get a deal. We'll talk tomorrow. Hey, in the industry news, I saw that Stalls, you know, Stalls has their Stalls TV, and it's been out for quite a while with lots of shows, obviously. But they they announced that they're going to be doing a regularly scheduled 11 a.m. probably Eastern time every Monday morning a TV show, and 
I thought, wow, am I reading about our show? Uh, industry news, gossip, trends, uh, interviews. Gee. <laughs> so, and you they, know, they, and, they stole that idea from two regular guys. And you know, we love Ted Stall. We love those guys. So we're not, we're not. Uh, I read this. <laughs> you probably are hipper than I am, but I, I have to keep up with the latest uh, talk. And someone said, oh, so and so. What was the word? Threw shade on somebody. You know. You, you, oh yeah. So we're, so we're not. Hey, hey. We're not throwing shade on Ted Stahl now. We're just uh, Ted Stahl is the best boss I ever yeah, worked. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's at the top. Yeah. So they're having their weekly show, like we've been trying. We've been thinking about going live, but they're doing it. I guess it's live, and they've got a little picture of people on, like the Today Show. So that'll be interesting mm -hmm. to watch, and we'll have to uh, we'll have to get Ted to come and talk to us. And when we're at SGIA, we'll have to interview Ted. So that's Saul's TV. And uh, then I saw this morning that Sawgrass got sold. I, I, you know, we know Sawgrass yep. was the thousand pound gorilla with the, their patent for years and the patent ran out, but they sold to a company called JK Group. That was just a news thing on in Impressions Magazine. Uh, JK Group makes inkjet ink. They own, they do JTEC. And I don't know the numbers or nothing other than they said, oh, Stalls is going to still be a self-contained, you know, we're not going to make changes. <laughs> you said Stalls. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sawgrass. We're not going to make changes today, you know, and then a year from now, it'll be all rolled in. So maybe we'll have a report on that. I'd be curious what they sold for. I, I have no idea what Sawgrass grows. I mean, I don't think those numbers are probably. Oh, I have a contact there. I know somebody that works for Sawgrass. I'll have to pick up the phone and uh, see what, what I can scope out. So I knew. Hey, uh, you had commented to me uh, last night, you have no AC. <laughs> we talked about this a little bit because you're, you're a, uh, but, but, uh, you know, we talked earlier that uh, I lived in Arizona all my adult life, and so I've made my thousands and thousands of screens in Arizona where, boy, those suckers dry pretty fast. And I was making screens last year here in Bowling Green for a little event I was involved in, and those suckers would not dry. And it was an eye-opener for me. And so I know you have some thoughts on that, and, and you've done your, your share of uh, talk about humidity control and hygrometers and stuff. So what's your what's your ramble for today? One of the best consulting jobs I ever did was in the Bahamas. <laughs> There's it was some all, there. It was all set up, and they'd hired me to set up the equipment, give them that one-week jump start because they had never screen printed before. Right. So they wanted a live, and, and I told them in particular, because I've dealt with islands in the past mm -hmm. when I did work in Bermuda, that when you're surrounded by water, the relative humidity is usually pretty high. Now, that's in Bermuda, which is up the North Carolina coast, but down south below Florida in the Bahamas, it's even worse. The average uh, relative humidity is 80% to go with the 80 degree temperature. And when I got there, even though it was in December, I get there and the number one thing I say is, okay, where's the dehumidifier? I says, you know, we could not buy a dehumidifier here on the island. Go and figure. So they, go figure. I mean, no, that's just weird, I think. It turned out it was Christmas time. And a man that they associate with was in Florida, had his own private plane, and he was buying Christmas gifts in Fort Lauderdale for all kinds of people. It's actually, this is a pretty damn big plane. It was, it was pretty interesting uh, to go to the airport and pick up this stuff. And, um, you know, when he arrives, they'd call him and say, get us a dehumidifier. And I said, go to Sears and get the biggest Kenmore dehumidifier you can buy. It's going to be $250, $200, whatever. So he comes in and he backs the truck up, and there's automobile tires and stuff that he brought back. <laughs> Levi's. One of, things, yeah, one of the last things was the dehumidifier. I coated screens the day before, and they would not dry. Mm. So literally unbox it, plug it in, put it into the beautiful little screen room that they had, and watch the high on the wall go, and everybody is going, oh, I see. And it was a, you know, luckily they were able to pull this rabbit out of the hat. Otherwise, all that water left inside the stencil blocks the sensitizers from joining up. Now, in the winter, it's never a problem. Now, you'll say, oh, wait, I touched the screen and the screen was dry to the touch. Yeah. And my favorite slogan is, yes, it's dry as a tomato. So I got to call you. <laughs> You've used that before. I like that. That's such a so, great analogy. So surface water, water on the surface of any stencil, that will dry. It will always dry to the touch. But just below the surface, there's all that, that 
Why, if the relative humidity is the same as the amount of water in your stencil? So here's a pop quiz. Let's say you got a 45% solids on your emulsion. That's a 55% water content. And relative humidity, the air inside your screen room is also at 55%. Why would the water, it's sitting back and saying, I'm having a little vacation here. Why would it leave? Why would it jump out? Mother Nature loves equilibrium. And if the air is equal to what's inside the stencil, why would it ever leave? So this is critical. This is why you have a hygrometer, a, a measurement, a, a meter for measuring relative humidity inside your screen room. And you should probably have one in the shop. Now, a guy calls me and he's talking about, yeah, I'm really having some problems. I've tried all kinds of different emotions. There are specifically, I'm interjecting my own thing now, but he said all, he's tried all kinds of emotions and it all don't seem to work. And I know from being a civilian and for working for Yolano, I know that they all work. Mm -hmm. All are basically the same. It's the subtleties, but if it's not dry, you're going to have humidity problems in those dog days of summer. So he's having sticking problems. Now he's got a direct machine. He's using an eye image from m and And so he's got a good piece of equipment there and it doesn't really matter. You, you know, you, you, you shoot the ink on the, uh, on, uh, on the stencil, you pick it up and you put it right in front of the starlight or you have a starlight scanner that goes right over the top and boom, it's cured within minutes of your putting the inkjet film, or the inkjet ink onto the stencil. But he said his stencil is sticking to the eye image. There are metal parts in the clamp area. And so that's sticking. Well, if emulsion is sticky, it's not dry. Mm -hmm. Say that again twice. If the emulsion is sticky, it's not dry. When I sold inkjet film for you, you take the inkjet film on it, it felt dry. You tape it in place, you expose it, and moisture comes out with the heat of an exposure lamp. If you don't have LEDs, you've got a, a, uh, a, uh, a hot lamp, a, a metal halide lamp. And so that heat drives some of the moisture out of the stencil, and it goes into the what? the water bearing inkjet film. Now, you and I have had this debate in the past about inkjet film being waterproof, except it's not. Otherwise, water-based ink wouldn't be absorbed by it. You still have to evaporate all the water out. And if there's still water in the inkjet film and water in the stencil, you put those two together, that makes yeah. a nice, sticky something. Mm -hmm. So, I asked him whether or not his his relative humidity gauges, he's got one in the shop. He's got a nice one. You know, I love these guys when I call and I say, have you got a 21 step grayscale? And they go, uh, no. No, but this guy had he a had, hygrometer, right? He had a hygrometer, so A plus. Mm -hmm. But he's also, there's a hygrometer or a, a, a digital readout on his, his uh, uh, dehumidifier. And so I asked him, what does that say? Well, that says 55%. I never trust the ones that are on the on the dehumidifiers because they're for housewives that I got down the basement and it's for comfort level. It's not for what we need. We need to industrially dry the room so it sucks all the water out of the stencil. So ignoring that, I asked him to go out into the shop and go into the room and the relative humidity was the same. How often are you emptying the dehumidifier? And he says, mm, once every two days. Once every two days. Downstairs in my basement down here where I have a 35-year-old Montgomery Ward. It's a pretty beefy one, but it doesn't look any different. I'm, you know, it's not any bigger. Three times a day in the summer. Oh, Richard, would you go down and empty the dehumidifier? Because Gina, my girlfriend, has got hats and fabric down there. That's got to be dry. Mm -hmm. And we can never get it below 40%. And I'm taking out at least three gallons of water out of the basement right. every single day in, in these dog days of summer. Mm -hmm. So this came down to can you trust your relative humidity gauge? So you can go to Lowe's or Harbor Freight or Amazon mm -hmm. and get a fine one. If you want to check it, there's a standard for checking whether or not uh, your relative humidity gauge is working correctly. And what you do is you take 
this happens to be the cap off of one of my medicine bottles. And you fill this with some non, non iodized, iodized salt. So if it's got the iodine in it, you don't want that because it's extra minerals that you don't want in there. So you just look and get table salt that's not ionized. You put some salt in, and then you just add enough water so that the salt is damp, not wet, not a slurry. There are literally hundreds of YouTube videos telling you exactly the same thing. Then you take this, you put this in a plastic bag. I don't have it in there now. But you put this in a plastic bag, and you take your relative humidity gauge, and you put it gently on the table. I'm doing it up here so you can see it. And then you leave plenty of air inside, and then you seal up your Ziploc bag. Ziploc, a trademark. Now you let this sit for 8 to 12 hours. Come back the next day, and you see whether or not your relative humidity gauge is reading 75%. Where this comes from, I don't know. But I trust, because I've read this in real science magazines, not or science article 25 years ago on how to calibrate. Now, in my youth, I bought lithium chloride. I bought 100 grams of lithium chloride, which I had to go to a pharmaceutical house, but I was buying other things anyway, and it was expensive. But I did it because I wanted a real test. And if you take that same practice, you take the, the lid off of a, one of your pill bottles, and you put some lithium chloride in it, and then you add just enough water so it's damp, like damp sand, and you put that in, you should read 11%. Now, like with a thermometer, where I take my uh, Atkins thermal probe, Atkins Cooper thermal probe, and you put it in boiling water, and then you put it in ice water to see whether it goes from 32 degrees to 212 degrees to get a good range. Some of these hygrometers don't have an adjustment in them, but it's fairly lineal, meaning if it reads 71%, you know, you just have to take 3% off. But what I want is I want it down into the 11s and the 20 paper. And for that, almost always, you need an industrial grade dehumidifier. If you're getting it down to 10 to 20 percent, that's amazing. Where, other, to do that. other than Sears, where are they going to buy one now? What I told this guy on the phone. Like Granger? I mean, I'm just is I said, that. do you know a heating and ventilating guy? Mm. Did you tell him that there's a case, or maybe not a case, a case of of Great Lakes Brewing Beer over at your uh, shop and you wondered if he'd like to come over and have a couple of beers with you, you show your heating and ventilating guy who's a professional in the business and you say, this piece of junk dehumidifier is not pulling enough water out. Now, if you just go look at the, if you just go to Lowe's and, and Home Depot, I'm sure you're going to get a guy who says, I can read the outside of the cardboard box just as well as you can. But what they're going to show you is that if a 100 cubic foot room or a 500 cubic foot room or an 800 cubic foot room, that's where you have to get a bigger and bigger and bigger to be more efficient. Because I could stick a little teeny, teeny, weeny air conditioner in the window and it probably wouldn't cool this room because the sun comes in in the morning. And this room is 90 to 100 degrees every morning in the summer. Now, if I got all the doors and windows open, I'm cooling the entire house. I'm dehumidifying the entire house. Here's where you get a, a plumber's smoke punk, like I talked about the last time I talked about dehumidifiers. So I want you to ask your professional, and I want you to buy the best, you know, the, the most volume dehumidifier that you can, and you got to change it on a regular basis. First thing in the morning, get that, get that standing water. You might as well be using the the bathroom for your screen room, which many, many people do because that's where the wall But those standing toilets in a bathroom are continuously evaporating a lot more water than your stencils are. So the dehumidifier's got to suck water out of the toilets and your stencils at the same time. So what's it going to cost them? Two or three hundred bucks? I haven't bought a dehumidifier in years. Dehumidifier, uh, 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 Sears, Kenmore, 150 pint or whatever they're called is going to cost about 150 bucks. That's the minimum. You mm -hmm. got to spend at least that much. But I'd love for you to spend more money than mm -hmm. that because the faster you dry your screens, the better they're going to yeah, be. Yeah, the waste of downtime, the, the man hours, I think, of just waiting around and trying to force them to dry or whatever, you know. Good topic. Now, I like that. So the next thing 
I tell this guy on the telephone to add insult to injury. Luckily, he's too far away. He can't poke me in the nose. Is his screens were breaking down. This is why he called me in the first place because he's been asking a lot of people, and they're you know they're not really helping him. And I said, well, how are you measuring whether or not your screen's exposed? I said, well, we set it up. The, we're doing it the same way. I do a few tests. Are you using a 21-step grayscale? And he goes, no, never heard of a 21. So that tells me that every single stencil manufacturer that he bought from, and he rattled off everybody. So I'm, you know, every rep that he ever talked to, the first thing out of their mouth was, what measurement do you get with a 21-step grayscale? And when he says, I don't have one, you can't really discuss it. Because, first of all, I don't think that he's actually curing. You know, I hate that word exposing. He's not curing his stencil completely because the UV energy has got to move all the way through the stencil to the inside. Because when he prints water-based ink, if it's raw on the inside of the stencil because the UV energy didn't move all the way through, then you put water-based ink, water that makes un stencil dissolve. Then you take your water-based ink, put it in the stencil, and you rub it with a big gigantic rubber erase, I mean a squeegee. You rub it back and forth, pushing down as hard as you can to make that ink go through. Why do you think it breaks down from the inside? Because it's raw on the inside and the water-based ink breaks it down. My only other tip is that in high humidity weather, the only one I know of, but I'll bet you a million dollars, Kiwo, Autotype, CCI, who did I leave out? Morikami, my friends at Morikami. Everybody has got a summer emulsion that is best at the, uh, at um, at being good in high humidity. For Yolano, it's DLX. Now, it's not a dual cure. Acrylates, acrylics that are added in to make dual cures work better, they're naturally sticky and gummy. And so, in the summer, if you want the best, it's going to take longer to expose. But this guy, he had a starlight, so he can change his exposure to whatever it is. He doesn't have the attachment on his eye image. So, you know, in the summer, when you can do water-based sink, yes, it means you've got to invest in different coating material. But if you want the best results and you want longer runs, use a diazo-based DLX emulsion or whatever manufacturer might have. You know, if, if you're using CCI like this guy, then... You know, call CCI and say, I want to stick with you, or you go to your rep and say, I want something that's going to be good in high humidity. What can you offer for me? Is that enough? That's I think that's too much. That's no, plenty. That's Richard, plenty. my head is exploding. That's plenty. No, I, le I, I learned a lot. And, and <laughs> I didn't know that they made summer emulsions. I probably missed it because I have modern emulsions. So I, don't, so I get it for free for class. Well, maybe not a summer. Florida, for instance. If you ship into Florida, it's humidity, humid all the time. Yeah. Um, no need for it in. Arizona, no. but I'll bet you in Bowling Green where there's lots of trees and lots of rivers oh, and water underneath. It's, it's I, Kentucky, buddy. Yeah, I'm, That's where the good bourbon comes from, right? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to get a gig doing some search for the local new bourbon and brew fest. <laughs> this is the bourbon country. So oh. anyway, good topic. I like that. I think that's a very topic. If you want to learn more, if you want to learn more about screens, you should go to the Saudi Pro Screen at Mind's Eye Graphics, August 14th, 14th and 15th. 15th. Yeah. I'll be there as a civilian keeping my mouth shut. Watch this video if you need this, but I've been pro I promised that I would be. No, they should go. They should go for sure. That's going to be a good deal. While we're on that topic, let's just hit it real quick. I got a boot camp uh, August 21st to the 23rd here in Bowling Green. Uh, there's the MBN Philly show August now your, 28th. Your boot camp is at Art and Printing? Both. I do two classes. I do one class. It's a three-day class for basic startups, beginners, people that have been printing for a few years and only did one color, you know, because they end up printing a black shirt, six colors. They learn about that kind of stuff. And then I do my separations class, three days of how to do separations. It's really kind of a T-SEPS class. It's evolved to that. Uh, but if they have any kind of automated program, it's uh, they'll leave being an expert separator. Then you've got uh, NBM. Do they call it printware? I always keep calling it printware. Oh, no, they don't call it printware. I, mean, I know it's called the MBM show, shows, but I still the, think of it. Or the big show, depending on, on what it is. Yeah. Printware always has only been one quarter. It's always been vinyl wraps. Yeah. Uh, they, I forget what Bob's vinyl wrapping magazine is because that's not my trade. Uh, but the there's also A&E &E, uh, awards, awards and engraving. Yeah. Um, it used stuff. to be uh, digital graphics. Yeah. So I, I don't, I'm not exactly sure.
but when they have a print print magazine right here, I'll look it up while you're telling. Well, me. I think they call it MBM because they changed their, their 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 web address years ago. But I still think of it as print anyway, they've they, got the, the new printware magazine. Look, they got the entire brochure. The magazine looks thicker because what they're calling they have it, the entire brochure in it. What, what is the MBM show? Which I think is kind of wrong. They had a brand there with printware, I thought, but but it wasn't oh. always. But you're right, it wasn't always printware. It was always the other shows wrapped up into one big show. This here, it's called the NBM show, but of course, this is the Long Beach show that was last week. Right, right. That's what I'm teasing. Yeah. So the so the Philly show is August 20th to the 30th. We have ISS Orlando, September 10th to the 12th. You're going to be at uh, Mind's Eye Graphics, Greaves on Garments, uh, October 9th through the 10th. Mm -hmm. We're all going to be at SGIA, September 4th through the 5th. Uh, 4th, 5th, and 6th, pardon me. And, uh, and then Three beyond. days only. Three days only. That's it. So, hey, hold. Talk about that printware real quick. I haven't uh, because I've been moving around. I haven't gotten a trade, a, a physical hard copy for a few months. That's the new printware. Well, you've got the you've got the new editor, and I see that they've, you know, I'm just, you know, because I'm talking. I haven't talked about printware on this show for a long time, but they have a whole new style. It looks different. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it's real hard for you to find out who wrote articles, although it's still there. It's just they're not really promoting who. Uh, who printed the there, there's a lot in this one, just like I talked about wearables last week. Hold so, it up, hold it up. You showed it to me earlier because that, the, you know, some of these magazines were down to 40, 50 pages. You know, that's probably well, this, this one's heavy. This one, when I picked it up from the mailbox uh, last, you know, a couple of weeks ago, it's definitely, you know, it's definitely got some weight to it. But the first thing that I read was an article by Chris Pluck. Chris Pluck has been always been. In my opinion, the master of all uh, transfer. And anytime that I ever had any problems with transfer work, it was Chris Pluck that I uh, that I called. So I just I read his article right away, and it's about textures on transfers. And of course, one of the problems with textures on transfers is that when you're clamping them down, they're going to get crushed. So he he deals with all sorts of things, and any article by him is terrific. Lon Winters. He's with the, he's with he's with Wolflex, or 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 Poly One, right? Um, let me just let's see if he's changed before I say that. I recall that he was in. Yes, but as long as I've known him, he's been associated with Wilflex. Yeah. And I, I apologize that I don't know exactly where he's working now. I haven't seen him for years. I see him all the time when I went to England and stuff like that. So, um, uh, Lon Winters has got a, a terrific article that hovers around a convention. Uh, you know, a, a, a Star Trek convention. So he's got a, a Star Trek theme, uh, but it's, he's printing uh, a, a white, very fine half tone on a dark garment in his article. Joe Clark's in it this this month. He's doing press calibration. So everybody, whether you get a manual press or not, you should be reading that. And again, if you don't get the paper version, you can always online. go online to NBM.com. Yeah, they're all online now. Now it's a big article about Made in America. So this I have not yet actually read yet, but I saw lots of our friends in there. They've got that pretty girl there. I don't know what the female editor says about that girl. I don't know if she's American made or not, but she got my attention right away. Oh, she was made in America. <laughs> so Ben Robinson from Hotronics, you mentioned yeah. him. They've got lots of little quotes. So it, it goes back to the old style impression style, Deborah Sexton style of living. Little quotes for lots of people. Mark Vassalantone, Tommy Jensen from Jensen Apparel, John McMillan from King Louis. I don't know him, but I've been with him years and years and years. And of course, Rich Hoffman is the, the star. He's certainly the biggest equipment manufacturer in the United States. Who's maybe in his maybe factory in the world? The maybe maybe in the world for screen print gear? What do you think? Oh sure, definitely, because there is no space yet. <sighs> Proper calibration. Get your breast. Press settings. Mm -hmm. That's from from Uncle Joe. Uncle, Uncle Joe. Joe Clark. There's his. That's an old picture. <laughs> yeah, well, he used the same one. I know. We all do I used that. to take that picture and and I used to Photoshop stuff on top and send it to him. Put right back uh -oh. something like that. I was that. my hit shots and took care of from some of my age spots and some of my uh, crow's feet and. All right, so I'm missing it in here, but there's also an article by Marshall Atkinson who seems to be exploding with writing, <laughs> and he's about high volume. Shop. So he's got pictures of Gildan and uh, Canvas and uh, uh, what's the name of the, the Canvas company boxes. So gigantic runs. Even if you're a little guy, 
all the lessons learned are, are well worthwhile. So very good printware magazine this month. I, uh, I encourage you to download it from the yeah. uh, NBM website. I'm glad to see it. And I, as I said last week, I think wearables is giving these guys a run for their money. So maybe they're maybe they're turning up the volume a little bit now. They're feeling the pressure of a third magazine that was kind of an also ran for so long. So, hey, that's our show. Do you think? Okay. We covered it all. We covered trade magazine. We got the trade shows. Nice section on the uh, uh, stencils and on humidity. And uh, we did some uh, gossiping and uh, no more rumors we can talk about. And I think we're good to go. I enjoyed talking right. to you guys. Bye, Richard. Thank you. Bye bye.